behind the scene is a communication effort to raise awareness and promote the values that our alliance was built upon. I am Eugenia Joni, the president of Youth Atlantic Treaty Association of Albania. Together we will be at NATO headquarters to talk with high-level professionals, officers, with assistant officers, with interns working in NATO to share their own perspective on gender issues and their own experience working in a security and defense environment such as NATO is. Research and lessons learned from politics and diplomacy has shown that negotiations and peace processes that include women tend to result in more durable and sustainable peace. What is your experience in this regard? And could you agree to this statement and could you share any example that you have encountered in your professional life in support of this? The fact that I'm a woman gives me a perspective into one half of the population that uh, needs to be more represented, uh, not just uh, here in this organization, but everywhere. And the part uh, where you have to uh, study and prepare for this type of work, um, I think, uh, is, is uh, um, not dependent on the gender. Um, and um, so I think uh, it is the, uh, really a multiplicity of factors uh, that contribute to uh, success, however you define it. I now have an action plan that was just agreed uh, last October by defense ministers that ensures that gender perspectives and diversity perspectives are taken into account into uh, everything we do, the core mission of the alliance, the three core tasks, um, as well as um, uh, the representation on the international staff, the international military staff where uh, we currently have 30% of women in senior positions. Of course, it's not 50 there yet, so yeah, we, there's space progress, but uh, it's more than it ever was uh, before. And we also have uh, 42%, I think, of women altogether on the international staff. So um, uh, it is progress, definitely, for us. So the challenges are that we're still in a minority. And uh, uh, every challenge that comes from being a minority is also valid in this context. Uh, uh, you do have to work harder uh, to make your voice heard. Uh, you do have uh, to work harder to uh, uh, yeah, weigh on your pace. But uh, uh, interestingly, that also, also makes you better. And so this is the other side of the challenge and opportunity. I do think that we need to have uh, much greater awareness of the need to have fuller representation in terms of both gender and diversity. In this organization as well as elsewhere, uh, throughout the Alliance, in our national institutions and, um, and uh, um, I, I believe everything else uh, that we have done so far um, on this road has contributed to this. More needs to be done. Can we affirm that after 21 years since the UN resolution, the cross-cutting agenda of women, peace and security have moved forward to better ensuring women participation and which are opportunities and challenges, if any, that lies ahead in the implementation process for our alliance? I'm sure that young girls are aware that there is no limit to what they can do, including in the security and defense sector. Um, and and uh, throughout our nations as well as, as as well as within NATO as an organization, so um, no tokens, uh, but um, investment in the future. I think this is what is going to bring the balance uh, um, uh, to a 50-50 ratio eventually. Being a female senior officer at NATO, in your experience, bears more opportunities or more challenges. Of course, there are challenges because you know it's, it's uh, nothing is ever easy. NATO is a very competitive organization. Uh, it aims to represent 30 countries, and uh, um, you do have to prove yourself every day, not just to your male colleagues, also to your female colleagues. Um, so, uh, 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 having said that, I love it. The security and defense domain have been dominated by men for a very long time in history. Do you believe that setting a token level of quotas regarding the representation of women in security and defense decision-making by each member country might be the answer to achieve quality and a sustainable security and defense sector? 12% women in, uh, uh, on the average in our uh, um, allies' armed forces. Um, so uh, there's plenty of space for women to uh, um, 
uh, increase that average. Uh, the thing is, if you're young now, there's absolutely nothing you cannot do. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, believe in any artificial barriers. So go for it and go for it with conviction and, uh, um, uh, and, and, and then eventually come over to you. Considering the overall average of our audience, which is between the ages of 18 and 35, do you have a message addressed to the youth that may inspire and motivate them to work in this environment? Gender and diversity portion, but also the merit uh, and, uh, and uh, the absolute uh, preparedness portion. And that is our former uh, Deputy Secretary General, Rose, Rose Gottemuller, who uh, is, I think, in my view, one of the best public speakers. So, so my advice to young people would be to look uh, at uh, the example of uh, women like Rose Gottemuller uh, as an inspiration if they're interested in pursuing a successful career in, in the security and defense sector.